I am Michelle Monet. I am the expert life and relationship coach, coaching people from rejection to redemption. Thank you. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my Facebook page. Welcome to my scope for those who are watching me on Periscope and those who are watching me on Facebook. Thank you so much. I decided to do this uh, all at once today. So um, I am going to discuss sex, lies, and videotapes. I know that some of you uh, have seen that movie if you are old enough. But if you're not, just in case, um, I will give you a little synopsis of that movie. But before I do that, let me let you know, if you haven't already done so, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Michelle Monet, as well as look for me October 1st for my launch of my new page. I am Michelle Monet on Facebook, as well as Instagram and Twitter. You will be able to see that. So when you follow me on those channels, you won't be able to see much, but I promise you October 1st is gonna be well worth the wait. So into our talk here, sex, lies, and videotapes. Um, that show was about a young woman who was married. She was actually uh, going to see counseling in regards to her husband who happened to be cheating with her sister. Well, they ended up, ended up uh, interviewing her. The brother-in-law was interviewing her in regards to questions about sex and all these lies and stuff like that. Well, the reason why I decided to use this title is because that's how we treat a lot of different situations in our lives. Well, you're probably thinking, Michelle Monet, how do I treat my life with sex lies and videotapes? Well, because those three instances, sex, lies, and videotape, are really three of the most vulnerable places that you possibly can be in. Of course, we know the intimacy with sex. We know intimacy with sex. We also know that when you lie, you are placing yourself in a spiritual vulnerability. You're placing yourself in a vulnerability to be able to be found out. You are placing yourself in a place where your whole integrity can be lost because of that. The videos. I am a photographer. Been fourteen. Been for fourteen years in photography. When you look through that lens or videotape, and you are not being your true and authentic self, that person that's behind that lens can see who you are. They can see if you're smiling, your real smile. They can see if you are having a bad day. They can see if you're nervous. They can see a whole lot of things. I used to be able to, be able to minister to my people, my customers, when I would take photos of them, and which is why I got a lot of people wanting to take my, uh, me to take their photos. So those are three of the most intimate times that you can have. And when we're doing that, most people don't want to be vulnerable. And them not wanting to be vulnerable leads them into unfulfilled situations. Why? Because you're not giving up yourself. You're not playing full out. You're not in a position where people can see you for really who you are. And when somebody can't see you for your authentic self and love you and get to know you for your authentic self, what happens is they, they miss out. And you really miss out too. Why? Because you're not being you. You're fighting this battle about trying to figure out who you are. You're fighting this battle about if they are going to like you and all of these things. And it's really not a good look. People are hiding behind those perfect exteriors, the person that they want people to believe. But when they get behind closed doors and they rip off that mask and they become this other person that, the, that society, the world, friends, family, and many people don't get to see, they have they, they are living in, not in their authentic selves. They're not living in their authentic places. And that makes you unhappy. Eventually, you can do it for a little while. You want people to think that you're tough and rough and you're, you're smiling or you're happy and you're pretty and go lucky, all of these things. But if you're not being authentic when you're quiet and by yourself, guess who suffers? Yep, that would be you, just in case you didn't know. So people are so worried about what folks are going to think if they found out who I really am. You know, I was in that place. I was in a place where I had to walk around 
strong. Yeah, I was making I was making really good money. You know, I was I had this magazine or I had this business. I had this degree. I had that. I had all these things, all these titles, all these things that made me to be who I was supposed to be. Well, at least so I thought. Instead of me being my authentic self, my authentic self is being creative. My authentic self, my, my mind is always going. My authentic self is I love to talk, not necessarily talk about myself or I just love to talk. I love really good, deep conversations. Those conversations that stimulate the mind and go, mm, I like that. Those, those thoughts that, those conversations that make you really challenge yourself. That, that make you feel like I need to go study that a little bit more. Those are the conversations that make me really go, wow, I love this, I love this, I love this. You know, and I wasn't being that person because I felt like I had to dim my light. I feel like I had to not be who I really am so that people would like me, so that people wouldn't even get intimidated by me or something. I wasn't being myself. I wasn't being that video. I was lying to myself in my most vulnerable place. And that wasn't a good look. When people don't want to be their authentic self or they're trying to hide in this perfect exterior motion or place, what happens is they begin to stay away from vulnerability. So they either get into relationships and they're not really um, giving of themselves. They're getting into relationships and they're really being fake. And they can only hold out for so long. That's why people say you take things slow or whatever, because you eventually find out who that person is, whether that's a good thing or very much a bad, a bad thing. You find out who people are after you just, just look, and look a little bit. But people don't want to be vulnerable because they think that you're, they're going to be judged. And most times people are, because we are a judgmental society. If we don't have... Uh, certain labels or we're not hanging with certain crowds or we don't have certain degrees or we're not making a certain amount of money or we're not driving the right car we don't have the best hair we don't have something 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 that other people think we should have then we're gonna be judged it happens right so in that place they stay away from vulnerability. I'm not gonna be vulnerable. I'm gonna get in this relationship and get out of it all that I can instead of giving myself 100 plus percent and then ex just expecting nothing in return and it just comes like that. Because when we give without looking to receive something, we automatically are giving it back. It was given back to us, Never mind. Have you ever been in a situation where you walked up and you just gave somebody something they didn't ask for you just walked away after giving it to them they sitting there going what you just so give that to me and just walk away and then what happens is somebody else maybe that person that you gave to or somebody else comes right behind it and gives you something and you're going ah, i just reaped what i sold that's really all that that is the law of universe, law of attraction, God, whoever you believe in, I believe in Christ, I believe in the, the Heavenly Father. He has no other choice. But if you follow the precepts that he, he pressed out there, he put out there, that you, you give, you shall receive. You, you're kind, you'll get, you'll get kindness back. You love, you'll get love back. You give of yourself, you'll get that back. It's, it's inevitable. But instead of us being vulnerable, we, we want to put up these strong exteriors and say, I, I'm not being vulnerable because I don't want to be hurt. I've been there. Many times we don't want to be hurt because of that whole fire on the eye thing. My mom tells us, don't you go touch that fire because you know you're going to get burned. And then we go touch the fire. So what we've, what we've learned as little children is not to do things that have caused us pain in the past or put on these exteriors to make sure that we are protected in them. But it doesn't allow you to really live full out when you're walking in with anything other than the protection of Christ, anything other than the full armor of God. If you just open yourself up, you would be surprised as to what you will get. You might walk away with something magnificent that you never thought that you had, you might think that you're alone, but you might realize that you're not really alone. You might think that you can't be loved again, but you might be loved better than you ever could have thought about being loved.
You might walk in with putting all your money in and thinking I'm about to lose everything and you might walk out a millionaire. You just never know what the situation could bring you if you just play full out. You know, we want the benefits of the sex, which is the feel good of any situation. We want the benefits of the lies, which is false protection. And we want the benefits of the videotapes, which is the attention. So we want the feel good, the, the false protection and the attention, but we don't want to do what's required or not really, re well, yeah, we don't want to do what's required to get those things. We just want the benefits. Oh, give me the benefits. Come on, bring it on. That's what we want. Instead of us thinking, man, I need to go ahead and put, put it out there, put it out there and see what happens. And because you are a great person, because you are the person that God made you to be, because you are, you are intentionally trying to find good in your life, you are destined to get it. Are you going to run into some people that might do you wrong? Yeah. There's going to be some people out there that's going to do that, that are set out to just do just that. Because, just because that's who they are. But then guess what? You then learn and not take that and, and go cry in the corner. You take that and you leverage it. What did I learn from that situation? How did I go ahead and how could I go ahead and make that situation over here a little bit differently? What do I need to do or change in myself to, to then go over here and do this differently? What can I learn from that person? What did they teach me? Every, all four of my divorces, I've learned something. Learned something from them all about me and it had nothing to do with me blaming myself it was thinking oh you know what i could have done that differently yeah so they, he cheated but i could have done this differently so instead of him you know maybe you know, so that you can keep your hands clean you know that you've done all that you can you could have done then you are you are clear-minded then you're not walking into the next situation with baggage that's how we leverage life's rejection that's how we take what has been given to us by no fault of our own or not as as invited we take it and we use it for our good that's what the word says all things work together for your good if you're caught up according to his purpose and you love him that means if i if i get rejected it's going to turn around for my good and i'm going to turn it around spin it towards me and then make sure i leverage it and i'm going to come up come up out of there on top i always do so Many times what happens after we, we, we want the benefits of the sex lies and videotapes, after we want the benefits of those uh, feel good, false protection and attention, and we don't get it, then we repress, which makes us oppressed and then takes us into a depression. It does that to us. Why? Because we are innately, we were wired with the ability, with the desire to be great in every situation. And because we were made that way, when, we're, when we feel like we failed, instead of us using that for fuel, remember I said a couple of weeks, a couple of days ago, fuel, faith, upgraded to exponential levels. When we don't use that, that rejection as fuel and we use it as a, against us, like somebody just oh, doused us with fuel, and I'm sorry, it's my speaker just went off, doused us with fuel and lit us with a flame, then we, we, we end up depressed. We end up feeling oppressed. We end up feeling repressed. We end up feeling like something is wrong with us instead of saying, man, that wasn't too good. I didn't like that, but I'm going to learn from that, and I'm going to move on to the next situation. Rather than being transparent, authentic, haphazardly, disconnected, horizontal, or flat, or even lifeless, I challenge you to move forward, be transparent, be intentional, be vertical, be you. Speak life into your life. Don't allow rejection and pain to be the catalyst for your downfall. Make it 
the catalyst for your rocket ship. Make it boost you into your next level. Make it take you up where you never thought that you could be at. Begin to assess your life. Begin to look at situations that you can change, that you can fix, that you can do that. And if you can't find out, if you can't figure it out on your own, find a coach that can help you do that. The greatest people, the most successful people on this earth have coaches. The most successful people on this earth. Oprah has several coaches. Michael Jordan has several court coaches. Uh, Tony Robbins is a coach and has coaches. I'm a coach. I have coaches. There are people and, and, and plans and programs out there that can help you live your life in abundance because that's what we were created to do. We were created to live our lives in abundance, to live uh, our most desired lives. Why? Because that's who we are. We are heirs. Heirs to thrones mean that we can have whatever the kingdom has. It belongs to us. It's inevitable. So I just want to stop by for a few moments and, moments and encourage you guys to, you know, really use what has been given to you, whether it's by invite or not, for your game. Use your pain for your game. Do that. You know, look for me October 1st when my page, I am Michelle Monet, is coming out. It's launching, y'all. Y'all better get with it. I'm telling you, there's going to be some super exciting things that's going to happen over there. If you have not followed me on Instagram and Twitter, follow me at I am Michelle Monet. If you cannot remember how to spell my name, go ahead, look above the video, and you will see my name. Just Michelle Monet without the hyphen over the E and put I am in front of it and you will be able to find me. You also will be able to have the information that you need in order to pre-buy my book. It's going to be $20. It's not going to stay $20. So it's only going to be a little, a little amount of people that's going to be able to get that $20 as well as I will be praying for whoever they are and put a word in that book just for them. So I want you all to know Rejection Saved My Life is coming out. That's the name of the book. My page, I am Michelle Monet, is coming out and even follow me on YouTube. So I am looking forward to seeing you on October 1st. I have some more things for you this weekend and stay focused, stay encouraged, stay the course, live right, love right. Talk to you later. Bye.